I'm nearly 20 years too old um, to be a member of the youth um, organisation. Um, but it's still an extraordinary pleasure to be here um, with all of you today um, to talk about the role that our youth has in promoting peace. I wonder sometimes what a person who has lived my life in Australia knows about peace. I've always had it. I've always had it. I've, I haven't had to fight for it. Um, and it can be very easy, if that's the case, for you to just take it for granted. But I know for many people in this audience tonight and many Australians now, they know the alternatives and they fought for it and their families have died and they hold peace in a particular place. That again, a person who's lived my life, sometimes we, we don't understand what we have. Um, I wanna talk about the extraordinary time we are in, in Australia with our young people who come from many cultures at once. We have the world in us, in this room, and we have bits of the world in individuals, not just one part of the world, but various places in individuals. Wasn't this that way when I, when I grew up? When I grew up, you could grow up thinking the way you thought was the, 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 the right way, was the real way, it was reality. And when someone else spoke and they had a different view, you thought, oh, that's odd. My way is normal. You didn't even think about it, it just was. That was the way it was. But for young people in Australia now, that's not the way it is. And that's a remarkable thing. I met a young boy the other day who spoke I Hindi and English equally at about the age of 18 and he was telling me that there were some concepts he could say in Hindi but not English and some ideas and concepts that he could express in, in English but not Hindi. So he had this dual capacity to look at the world, a great gift that people of, many people of my generation didn't have. I'm going to explain it this way. I'm a musician, not by trade, I am, I'm, by nature. I'm a third generation I started learning uh, professionally, learning uh, when I was three. Three years old, I gave my first concert at five. Um, I practiced two or three hours a day all through school, eight hours a day when I graduated, and I, and I worked professionally. And the thing, one, it makes you the odd person in the room when you do that, because it was my first language. I could read it before English, so I do speak two languages. Um, but the better you get at it, the more you learn, it's as if you're climbing a mountain. And when you reach about the age of 20 and you're practicing eight hours a day, you realize you're in the foothills. And it's gonna take you a lifetime to be the musician that you can be in just that form, just the classical traditional form, Western classical music, which is thousands of years old. Then when I was about 21, I met another musician called Ashok Roy. I was a Carnatic musician, he came over from India. And he played and I, and I thought, oh my God, there's another mountain. So here was this other person that had taken thousands of years of tradition and spent his life and it was going to take him, his life, to be him in that tradition. And there were two of us. And I couldn't live his life. I couldn't even live part of it. I had to live mine. But I could peek in the window and understand that there was a world, like the TARDIS, for those of you who know Doctor Who, you open up the door and it's much bigger than it looks. There's this world in this man, thousands of years of world, and culture is like that. We have people in this room who draw on thousands of years of language and tradition and religious belief to create a view of the world which works for that community. It wouldn't exist if it didn't work. It exists, it works, and it defines when you make eye contact, simple things like that, how long you wait before you answer, you know, little tiny things, but also big things about the way you understand together what life is about and what good is about and what the universe is. And again, one person holds thousands of years in them. And we actually sit here in this room and beside you is a person that has traveled another path. 2,000 years, 3,000 years, in the case of Sanskrit, more than that, um, of, of you know, history. It's an extraordinary wealth. It's a wealth. And we have in our young people the capacity to understand how profoundly powerful it is when you sit in a room of people who can open up 10 worlds to you, not just the one that you live in, but 10 more. And we've heard some people speak about that today. Um, but for the young people, can I, can I just say to you how lucky you are 
This is not a question of tolerating it. This is a question of celebrating it, embracing it, thinking how extraordinary, what a, what a wonder it is that there are these different cultures in the world and we can peek in the window and take some of that wisdom for ourselves in our nation. And that, I think, is the real strength of our young Australians. We're at a unique place in the world. It's, there aren't many countries that have opened the door and let the world in um, as recently as we have so that it comes in with its history intact and its way of life intact. That is special. Um, so go forth, young ones. <laughs> go forth with this great capacity and change the world um, because all of the problems in the world that are due to difference can be solved by the power of difference. Um, and you have it here in this country. We have the world. Thank you.